This is the Black Widow Spider, one of the most infamous spiders in the world. The bold colors and painfully toxic bite make this one of the most feared animals wherever they can be found. But what you might not know is that the Black Widow is part of one of the largest and most diverse families of spiders in the world, the Theridiidae, or the cobweb spiders. And some of its close cousins are some of the strangest spiders you will ever see. I'm Mikey Green, and my goal is to show just how little we really know about the strange creatures living their hidden lives all around us. Today, we are searching for one of the most unusual spiders in the world, the Stretched Thief Spider. This close cousin to the Black Widow is not only strange in appearance, but also in behavior, which combined with their great camouflage makes them very hard to find. Thankfully, another small cobweb spider closely related to the Stretched Thief Spider is very conspicuous and happens to be found in similar areas. Let's take a look. In the web of this cyclosa or trash line or weaving spider right behind me is a really cool spider that, while not what we're looking for, is a very close relative and actually was at one point included in the same genus as the spider we're looking for. This is a dewdrop spider, an absolutely tiny kleptoparasitic species of cobweb spider that disguises itself as a tiny little droplet of water in the webs of other spiders. With the absolutely tiny, almost unnoticeably small size, as well as that silvery appearance, these almost never get detected by the host spiders that they live in, and therefore are able to eat small food items that don't make their way to the main spider living in the web. And while this kleptoparasitic behavior is extremely interesting, these dewdrop spiders are super common and I see them in many spider webs that I come across, even in urban areas. So let's leave this absolutely amazing dewdrop spider alone and look for its even stranger, rarer, and more interesting relative out here in this habitat. Seeing that beautiful dewdrop spider is a great sign in our search for the stretched thief, as they both share the same parasitic habit of living in or near other spiders' webs. After a little more searching, I noticed what looked like a little piece of debris hanging from an orb weaver web. Let's see what it is. Check this out. This right here is one of my favorite spider species here in the state of Florida, and one of the strangest looking spiders that you will ever see. This is Romphaea progissians, or a species of stretched thief spider. This is one of the most strangely elongated spiders I have ever seen, and that weird spindly appearance almost gives it an alien look to it with those extremely long legs that it often holds clustered in front of its body to make itself look like a piece of debris. That unusually long opisthosoma or abdomen and in the case of the male that very long kind of horn-like structure on the head known as a cephalic projection. Now there are some species in this genus Romphaea that have even longer opisthosomas but what makes this one species extremely strange is the presence of a distinctive spike at the end of the epistosoma that almost looks like a stinger. Now this isn't a stinger, thankfully, and that structure is completely harmless, but it is very important in identifying this as the species Romphaea progissians and not one of the other Romphaea species here in Florida. And you can see it's finally calmed down on this stick and it is doing its very distinctive behavior that I almost always find these in with its legs tucked all around its body to make itself very inconspicuous. The reason they do this is because they live inside the webs of other spiders. So they wanna make sure that they are as hidden as they can possibly be to remain undetected by their host. Like I said, these are a kind of parasite known as a kleptoparasite, where they steal food from the host of the web that they're living in. In this case, this was living in the web of a cyclosa orb weaver, and any small insects that make their way into that web can easily be snatched up by this Romphaea right here. Now the kleptoparasitic cobweb spiders are a whole diverse subfamily within the Theridiidae, which is a family of spiders called the cobweb spiders. Now nestled in that family is the genus Latrodectus, which is the famous, highly venomous widow spiders. That's right, this is a close cousin of the black widow spider, but the venom of the species does not compare at all to the toxicity of that of the black widow. So while this is a close relative of the widow spiders, there is no need to worry because even though it might look like a pack a sting on you with that strange spike at the end of the abdomen, and the fact that it's related to one of the world's most toxic spiders. This species is completely harmless, and in fact, I feel comfortable transferring it from my stick here to my hand. So let's take a look and see what happens if I can free handle this incredible spider. All right, I have made the transfer to my hands, and just like handling a widow spider, 
this Rongfea is using its front two very long legs as kind of an antenna form. It is using those two long legs at the front to sense the world around it. These Theridiad spiders have very tiny eyes and this Rongfea is using its very long legs to its advantage to be able to have a wide radius of being able to feel what all is around it. This spider is very confused right now, and it honestly has no clue where it is. It probably knows it's on another living organism. That's about all I can infer from the strange situation it's in right now. That elongated appearance not only gives them a really good sensory advantage in being able to feel food land on the webs of other spiders that they're living in, it also gives them a camouflage advantage. Like I said, these kleptoparasitic cobweb spiders need to remain as hidden as possible and nearly all of them hide themselves to look like debris and webs. The Argerodes we found earlier looks like a water droplet in a web, where this Romphea here looks like a piece of dead grass that got blown into the web. And this usually helps these spiders remain completely undetected while living inside the webs of other spiders. Now this individual right here is a male, and I could tell that because of the presence of palpable bulbs, as well as the presence of that really long horn-like cephalic projection. Most male kleptoparasitic cobweb spiders have that cephalic projection, and that's actually the best way to tell apart many similar species within that group. In fact, the kleptoparasitic cobweb spiders were all at one point lumped in the genus Argerodes. That genus, of course, now only has the dewdrop spiders left in it, as it was determined that things like this Romphea right here, as well as other kleptoparasitic spiders, were different enough in morphology to be put into separate genera. However, one thing they do all have in common is that the males do have a cephalic projection. Some males even have a second projection called a clypeal projection, and the shape and structures of these projections is super important in being able to tell the difference between different species in this group. But more importantly, and more widely for spiders as a whole, the best way to tell when you have a male is the presence of palpable bulbs. The pedipalps are these kind of leg-like appendages that you see on the sides of the mouth. Spiders use these pedipalps to help guide food into their chelicerae, which are their venom-injecting mouth parts that they have. At the end of these pedipalps on males is what is known as palpable bulbs, which are what these spiders use to store their sperm and use for mating. Only the males have these palpable bulbs, and it gives their pedipalps a kind of club-like appearance, which is not present on the pedipalps of females, which on this species, Romphaea progicians, are pretty long and thin, and definitely lack that club at the end. Females also have a longer abdomen in this species, as do most Romphaea species. How strange of a spider is this? It is a parasitic spider that lives inside the webs of other spiders, disguising itself as a piece of debris and basically stealing food from its host. It has one of the strangest appearances you'll ever see, and the fact that it is in the same family as one of the world's most toxic spiders. What a strange animal this is. This is exactly what I love about just going outside and looking for creatures. You really never know where you're gonna find some of the strangest animals. So let's put this incredible spider right back where we found it. Even though it is a parasite, it is native to Florida. So it is important to make sure that these are fulfilling their ecological niches out here in this habitat. Wow, really appreciate spending time with this amazing arachnid.